In lesson 16 here, we're going to focus on SEO, but I don't want to actually spend a lot of time writing SEO stuff because number one, it's kind of boring. And number two, really, that's kind of beyond the scope of this course. I just want to show you how you could incorporate SEO into these blog post heads. Now, we will take some time to actually write a couple things in Astro to actually tie all this together, but I don't want you to have to type out manual like meta tags. So what I'm going to have you do is actually copy some code from the description. You're going to copy three files. So in the description, you'll find a link to lesson 16 down below. And then what I want you to do is copy a file in here called SEO. You're going to copy a data file in here called sitedata.json. And then down here in the JS folder, you're going to copy one called jsonld.js. So do that and come right back with me. Okay, I hope you were able to get all three of those copied in here. You can see I've got SEO, I've got sitedata.json, and JSONLD. Now what we're going to do is just quickly talk through kind of what you might use and then how I set this up. And then we're going to tie it all together and that will really be where we spend our time. So over here you're going to see we've got a sitedata.json. This includes kind of like base stuff for my site. So like a basic title, a basic description, uh, an image tag that's a default. If I don't have one, this would be for SEO purposes. And just so that when I share the link, I have an open graph meta tag image so that it looks like an actual site rather than just a URL that I send somebody. Now I wanted to make this a JSON file because we haven't really worked with JSON, but just to show you that you can import JSON just like you would in any other application that uses JavaScript, you're doing the same thing right here. You're going to import JSON actually uh, in a couple places right here in the Astro file and then also in the JSON LD file. Let's go over to the SEO next. And over here, you're going to see I'm importing the site data here. I'm also importing this file, which we'll talk about in a second. And then I'm pulling in a bunch of things, titles, descriptions, URLs, images, front matter, and robots. Now, some of these we still need to pass in. But as I come down this way, you're going to see that what I'm going to do is generate some JSON LD, which we'll talk about later. So let's skip this for now. And just to show you that what we're doing is taking all the stuff we pass in and basically building out some important stuff for SEO. So for instance, I want the canonical link to point to whatever the current page is. Then I'm going to add a bunch of open graph meta tags. You can see I'm just taking the title, the description. I'm basically saying, hey, if there's an image, show me that image. Otherwise, grab the image from the site data. Same thing here with these other image options for URL and secure URL. Then I'm coming down here and just defining the same height and width for all these. This happens to be what these images are. And same thing here for the alt. So I'll either use the alt that's been passed in or I'll use the site default. Now I've done the same thing for Twitter. We've added the title, the description, I've added the image, I've added the image alt, and then the domain itself I'm actually pulling from my Astro config. And this is how you can pull that uh, site variable that we added in there, that, that property. There's just two other things in here. One would be this robots. So sometimes you might wanna actually hide a site from like crawlers and stuff, and you can do that by simply passing in this meta tag. So if that's ever the case, if this ever exists on any page, if I pass in robots equals true, then I wanna make sure that I show this so that it's not crawled by web crawlers and stuff. Okay, finally, we've got this JSON LD and I've got this fragment, which might seem a little bit weird to you because we haven't been working really with fragments. When you typically work with fragments, it's when you're like looping over stuff in React and you have to output some JSX, but you don't have just one element. So you can use a fragment and then you can basically wrap your stuff and it will disappear when it's rendered. Now in this case, you can use fragments. Uh, what I'm doing is using a special property here called set colon HTML. And this is why I wanted to do JSON LD just to show you one use case for this directive, which we have not yet talked about. And that is sometimes you have HTML you need to insert directly into your page. Now for safety reasons, Astro doesn't let you just do that. You can, however, use this set colon HTML inside the front tag, or if it's a, a self-closing tag inside its, its tag, and then point it to whatever uh, HTML that you're passing in. So we'll talk about this, and maybe I'll show you a real-life example here in a second. This right here, this JSON LD, is what's coming in from over here. Now, over this way, what I've done is I'm just using my Slugify function we have already created in the site data. And then I'm basically going to ask, hey, is this the type of post? If it is, I want you to return JSON LD that would correspond to a type of post. And it's the same kind of stuff, the, the post date, the author, um, an image for the post, title and description. Otherwise, just return like a generic one for the website itself. The website itself should pull in the title from my site data, and it should pull in kind of the, the base URL from the Astro config. Now, again, I'm not really trying to go over this in, in grave detail. If you don't know about the open graph tags or the those Twitter tags, if you don't know about JSON LD, uh, JSON LD is usually the thing people don't know about as much. And here's a helpful uh, site that'll help you actually generate what you need. So you can look at like local SEO and 
all this kind of stuff, and it will generate it for you. So in this case, I've looked at an article, and it just tells you, hey, here's how this should look. Now, once you've got this up and running, you can actually run a test either on your page itself or on the resulting code. And if I remember, I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so let's get all this up and running. And I realize that perhaps that telling you what I did is a little difficult to follow, but the only other way would be to type all this out manually, and then this would be kind of an SEO course, and that's not really my point. And there may be some ways to improve this as well. If you have suggestions, I'd be happy to hear. Okay, let me close this down, and let me close this down. And what we need to do is pull in that SEO into our, our head itself. So if I come down to my layouts, I've got this main head right here. This is where I want to... Uh, add this SEO. Now, I've already got a couple things like the title and the description. Technically, those would be for like SEO. So uh, that's all right. We'll be fine. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull in the SEO like this. If I start to type, the Astro extension should pull that directly in. And if I come up top here, let's see, yeah, there it is. So let's go ahead and call this like uh, component imports. Now, I need to pass all the stuff down to the SEO. It's actually all the same stuff I get up here. In addition to that, I need a couple of other things as well. So let's open back up the SEO and just remember what I need. So I need all of this. So let me come over here and I'm going to add all of this in here. Now, uh, we need to change this around a little bit. First of all, we're passing in essentially like title equals title here. But in Astro, you can just do it like this. Same thing with description. Now, Astro itself has a way to get the canonical URL with astro.url. So I'm just going to type it like that, astro.url, and I think that should work. Now, the image is something I'm only going to get if I've passed in a blog. So for now, I'm just going to surround it like this, and I'll explain why in a second. Same thing for the front matter. And then uh, robots can be from anywhere, but we'll do the same thing. It'll just be robots equals robots. Now, these I've not pulled into my Astro props up top. So let me come up top here, and I'll add image, front matter, robots. I think that's everything I need. Let me come back down here. Yeah, so that should work. The URL we're gonna just pull directly from here. And this should be in brackets and the URL should not be capitalized. All right, because this is something that uh, Astro gives us. All right, so let me talk you through what we're gonna do. So this head itself should receive title and description every time and it'll get a URL when Astro generates that for each page. Now, if it's a post, it could have an image and a front matter that gets passed down. Otherwise, these will just be empty. There'll be nothing there. Finally, if I want to, I can attach a robots, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, all this is coming down to the main head, which you know what that means. I need to get it down to this component. If you remember how we set all this up, let me open up the sidebar again. This main layout passed it down here to the main head. So let's do a little bit more prop drilling. I'll pass in here an image, front matter, and then finally robots. And we need to add the same things inside here to give it down to the head. So we'll say image equals image, or you can just do it like this in bracketed syntax. We'll say front matter. Finally, it will say robots. Now, my main layout is used by all my pages, but it's also used by my blog post layout. You might remember we wrapped this main layout in the blog post uh, layout, or rather the other way around. So I'm actually going to grab the same stuff here. So just like this, we'll come over to the blog post layout. I come up here. Actually, now I've already got the front matter, and in that I'll have the image, and I would have a robots.txt if I want to for some reason on a post. So actually, I don't need these right here from the props. I just need to pass in these. So I'll come back over this way, come down here, and I need to pass this into the main layout. Now, in this case, I've got front matter. I can pass it in just like this. Uh, I, I'm going to actually separate out the image, just pull it out of the front matter. That way, it's a little easier to work with. On the other side, I don't have to keep typing front matter. So here, I'm going to say front matter dot image. And we'll do the same thing over here. So I'll set my robots to be equal to front matter dot robots. Now, I know I'm kind of passing some of these things down twice because front matter contains both of these, but it's okay. It's just the way I set this up uh, to make it a little easier to work with on the other side and hopefully a little easier to understand. Now, if you're not writing it yourself, I know this can be a little confusing. So let me talk through this one more time and then I'll show you how it works. So let me go ahead and save this. So on any normal page of my site, all the content will go inside this slot. The page itself will pass along all this stuff, the image, the front matter, and the robots, if it happens to be that. And most of them just have a title and description, um, so that's mostly all I'll get. For instance, if I were to come over to my About page, you can see that's what's happened over here. I've just passed in a title and description. So this will go down to the main layout right here. These two, they'll then be passed on to the main head. Now, when I come to the main head itself, it will grab all those, and it will pass it down here to the SEO. Now, this will be the only thing it passes on along with the URL because I haven't passed any of these on from the About page. Then finally, when I get into the SEO, at this point, I'm going to grab all these things again. 
I'm going to go ahead and just populate all the open graph and the Twitter stuff with the content that's been passed in. If I passed in robots, which we'll do in a second, you'll see that it'll add this tag. And then finally, it generates this based on a JavaScript file that returns plain old HTML. That plain old HTML is based on whether it's a post or it's a website. Now, the way to decide that is if it has front matter. So if it has front matter that's been passed in as a prop called front matter, the only way that happens is if it's already a post. In that case, I will say, hey, go ahead and call this type of post. Otherwise, it'll be type of website. Now, in that JSON LD, the first thing I'm checking is if it's a type of post, which I'm getting down from that. Then I'll also get the post itself and the URL. These will only be useful, obviously, in here because everything else will just be generic right here. So if you tracked all that, let me close a lot of these things down and I'll stick with just the about page for now. I'll save this. Let's open this up. And inside the head, we should have a bunch of SEO stuff. All right, so here it is. We've got our SEO, our canonical link. I've now got all my open graph stuff and notice that this is connected to the actual page I'm on. Now I'm looking at the home page right now, so it's giving me all this default stuff. So let's go to the about page since that's what I've got open over here. So I'll open this up here. And now you see this is content about, that's the title, a bad title for the page, but it is. Uh, the description is just my about page because no image was passed in with this page. It just uses the default one. And as I scroll back down, you got the same thing with Twitter. It uses the default one. It's going to use my base site from my, uh, from my Astro config. And then this JSON LD is inside the script tag. You'll notice because it's not a post, it's just using the website version, which is the super generic one that just says it's a website. Now, what if I wanted to pass in a robots.txt? Well, all I'd have to do is say that I want to make sure that this about page passes down to the main layout, robots equals true. Now, if I do that, and I come back over here to the head. I scroll back down. You're going to see I've got robots right here. So it should not be crawled by search engines. Now, you can do more with this robots, but I'll leave that to you. Let me go ahead and kill this here. And then let's look at a blog post itself. So if I come over here to a blog post, and that's just the blog. So let me open this post right here. I come inside here. You're going to see that it gives me a bunch of other stuff here. I've got the title and the description that already is coming in like we set it up to start with. Then I actually get the canonical URL, which is the URL I'm currently at. Eventually, this will be my end point uh, when I get around to actually posting it live. Now down here, I've got the site name. I've got the title of the post. I've got the description of the post. I've got the custom URL, the actual image from the post itself. And then I've got uh, its alt, all this kind of stuff. In the JSON LD, I've actually scoped this out as a blog post. And it will tell the type of page it is. It'll get the description, all this kind of stuff, the author, the person who did it, the date it was published. All this is going to be done through what we set up today. Now, the nice thing about these Twitter cards and these open graph images is when I share this on like an iPhone or I share this on lots of different platforms, it will actually grab that data and generate kind of a nice uh, rich link that will preview the image, give the title, all that kind of stuff. And that's done with these open graphs. Now, if you didn't come here for an SEO course and you're not familiar with this already, I realize that this might be a lot all at once, but I just wanted to show you if you are familiar with it, how I might set it up in a normal site. And that way, at least these things will have open graph images and all that if you were to share it from the site we're gonna eventually publish. And before we close this out, I wanna talk one more time about that set colon HTML. So let me come back. Let's go to the about page since that's where we're at over here. And uh, let's say I've got some HTML up here, const like paragraph or something like this. And maybe it's just a paragraph string that says hi, like this. All right, now if I were to try to insert this into anywhere in my page, let's say I did it above this section, I might think I can just say paragraph. If I do that though, it's just gonna actually put the text itself. And what I want is this to be rendered as HTML. Well, how do we do that? Well, there are a couple different ways. Like I showed you a second ago, you can actually use a fragment and then just use the set HTML. In this case, I'm gonna set this to my paragraph and then it will actually render it as high. And you see it puts it actually down here just because of the way I've got this styled. Now, sometimes you'll actually have like embedded content. Maybe it's a whole string of stuff here and you wanna embed it inside of it like a div or something like that. So in that case, what I might do is come here and have a div and this would say set HTML and it would point to my paragraph. And now if I were to inspect this, it's not just a paragraph. And because it's a, a div the way I have all the CSS set up, it's actually inside of a div. And I've set the, the paragraph to say that. Well, in the next video, we're going to look at several key integrations. It's kind of the final thing we do before we build. So we'll build a React component. I'll show you how to set up Tailwind. We'll talk a little bit about using like a CMS. And all of that will be in the next video. I'll catch you then.